All right, so we flipped uh, to a new friend uh, and we're on the anterior side now. So we're going to be looking at uh, muscles in the anterior thigh, uh, the anterior hip, one muscle, and we'll look at the medial thigh, and then we have one muscle in the leg that we'll also look at. Okay, so let's start with our um, hip muscle. Okay, and as we look in here, you can see the tip of a muscle right here. It's kind of a cylindrical shape, and it's coming to a point. This is the iliopsoas muscle. Okay, now the iliopsoas, if we went past the inguinal ligament and up into the pelvic cavity, we'd see that the um, iliopsoas actually is formed by the combination of two muscles, the iliacus muscle, which sits in the iliac fossa, and the psoas major muscle, which is located next to the um, vertebral column, extending from inferior thoracic through the lumbar sections of the cord. Okay, it's a big uh, cylindrical muscle, and the two muscles combine uh, at the inguinal ligament and pass through to make a common insertion on the femur. Okay, and the iliopsoas is the prime mover for flexion at the hip. Okay, now this muscle, which uh, is broad and flat, is the sartorius muscle. The sartorius is um, very different in the cat than it is in the human. Okay, and the main difference is that it's much wider in the cat. As you can see uh, here, we can really only see the sartorius as we're looking at the anterior thigh. If we want to see the quadriceps muscle uh, group, which is deep to the sartorius, we have to completely reflect the sartorius. So when the sartorius is in place, none of the quadriceps group is visible. Okay, so the sartorius is an important muscle for uh, flexion at the hip and at the knee. So it's a synergist to the iliopsoas muscle at the hip and a synergist to uh, the hamstrings group uh, at the knee for flexion at the knee. Okay, we're going to reflect the sartorius now and we've moved the tensor fascia latte muscle out of the way so we can see the quadriceps group. Okay, now the quadriceps group, quad as you know means four. Okay, so our quadriceps group consists of four muscles which are arranged around uh, this central muscle of the four. And this group is the rival gang that works against the hamstring gang that we saw previously. Okay, so the leader of the quadriceps group is this central muscle, which is the rectus femoris. Okay, now the rectus femoris is the only muscle of the four in the group that actually acts at both the hip and the knee. Okay, it is a synergist to the iliopsoas for flexion at the hip, but working with the other members of the quadriceps they are all together considered the prime movers for extension at the knee. Okay, so when this muscle and the rest of the group contracts, the leg straightens. Okay, the knee extends. Okay, so the rectus femoris, as I said, is this big one here in the center. Uh, I always think of him as the leader of the gang, and he's got a nice shiny coat to show that he's the leader. Okay, and you can see that there are couple of muscles on either side and there's one additional muscle that we'll see that is posterior to the rectus femoris. These are the other three muscles of the quadriceps group and these are the vastus brothers and each one is named for its location. So we have the one that's lateral, this is the vastus lateralis, the one that's medial, the vastus medialis, and then as we move the rectus femoris out of the way, you can see that there is a third vastus brother, okay, 
the one that's got the rectus femoris is back, and that is the vastus intermedius. Okay, so he's intermediate between the lateralis and the medialis. Okay, so taking it from the top again, the quadriceps group, we have rectus femoris, vastus lateralis, vastus medialis, and then as we move the rectus femoris aside, you can see the vastus intermedius. Okay, now as we look over on the medial thigh now, we can see another muscle that is a bit different from its um, arrangement in the human. This is the gracilis muscle. Okay, and the gracilis is one of the superficial muscles, uh, or the superficial muscle associated with adduction at the hip. In the cat, kind of like the way the sartorius was, uh, the gracilis is so broad that it actually covers most of the rest of the adductors uh, and you have to reflect this muscle to see them. Okay, now we actually can see some of the hamstrings group here as well. So from here down, these two muscles are the semi brothers that we saw before. Okay, and then this section right here, this is where we have the adductor group. Okay, now the organization of the adductors in the cat is a little bit different from the organization in the human. In the human we have an adductor magnus, which is the largest of the adductor muscles, an adductor longus, which is the longest of the three, and then an adductor brevis, which is the shortest. Okay, in the cat, uh, these muscles do the same job, but they don't have the same arrangement, so we kind of just call them collectively the adductor group, okay? So this section would be the adductor group, okay? And then as we go past this big uh, indentation here, this muscle is the semimembranosus, okay? So remember when we were looking at it previously, we were kind of looking between the biceps femoris and the semitendinosus, so we can only see a little bit of it, uh, the part that was facing posteriorly. Here you can see much more of this muscle, so it's a much better view of the semimembranosus from this aspect. Okay, and here's the semitendinosus next door, and you can really get an appreciation as you look at the semitendinosus, how it has that kind of tendon-like shape of the cylinder that's pretty uniform in size uh, all the way through its length, okay? So adductor group, semi-membranosus, semi-tendinosus, and putting this back in place, this is the gracilis muscle. Okay, last but not least, we're gonna come down here to the leg, okay, and we've got uh, the tibia, which we looked at previously, and here was the tibialis anterior that we looked at on the previous cat. Okay, so if we go to the opposite side of the tibia, the posterior side, we find a muscle that assists the um, gastrocnemius and soleus in plantar flexion, and this is the flexor digitorum longus. Okay, so if we dissected down, we would see that this muscle has a tendon that covers the plantar surface of the foot and divides up into individual segments that go to each toe. Okay, so when this muscle contracts, this is what pulls the toes into that curled position as if they're making a little toe fist. Okay, so this muscle is the flexor digitorum longus. Again, it's a synergist to the gastrocnemius for plantar flexion.